Well, hey everybody, it's uh, Richard here, and um, it's been an absolutely awful afternoon. The weather has, um, the heavens have opened, and it's been really, really very wet. I've got some entertainment with me today. I've got uh, good old uh, Bud Flanagan and Alan with me today, and uh, a couple of, uh, well, three records I found in the local charity shop, so I thought I'd, short I'd, I thought I'd say, share with you. Um, this is part two of the Hamper gramophone, um, um, and uh, so I've done a little bit of work, which I thought I'd um, just bring to your attention. But before then, I'll just obviously um, uh, let you hear Bud Flanagan singing here, and then when he's finished, we'll uh, have a look at what I've been up to. So hang on to your hats. <laughs> Wonderful, and uh, thanks very much, Bud. Right, we'll just turn this off. There we go. There we go. There we are. I'm not actually sure whether the belt wants changing on the uh, good soul because um, it sometimes sounds a bit slow. And I'm, I've had it in the workshop for a few weeks, well, a few months now, and I have a feeling that we might be heading that way. So, so um, let's just put that down here. There we go. Um, because it was a spare belt I put in there, because this machine came to me in a bit of a state, as you already know from the previous uh, videos I've been making, so on the uploads. Anyway, uh, back to the subject in hand. I've also, um, actually just before then, just also found uh, some other records in my rambling through uh, the shops in Maidstone. This is the uh, Primo Scala. Uh, and his accordion band. Actually, this is very nice. This is a very nice record. These two, this one, and the Flanagan Allen on the Reflections label came together because they're numbered in the left-hand corner. You might notice that. 130 for that one, and this one's got uh, 129. So they were obviously together in someone's collection, and um, both very, very nice. Um, the Primo Scala one is particularly nice, actually. I quite like his music quite popular in the 30s accordions and um, quite popular also I notice um, one of my YouTube subscribers um, Deutschland Sender which is a German swing music I mean there's a lot of accordion music in that in that and I think that's probably where that came from and uh, always reminds me of good old Germany and uh, on that one but uh, anyway uh, right now back to the subject in hand now I've been doing some work you remember from the last video this is part two I suppose of the of the hamper gramophone um, I've now decided which horn I'm going to use this is the internal horn and um, it was a bit of a it was a bit rusty you probably noticed that from the last video that um, it looked a bit rusty in places so I've started to give it some paint I, I covered it in uh, in some good old um, uh, Herm, uh, what's it called? The get now, um, Herm Hermanite. That's right. The paint that uh, de-rusts everything, and I've covered it in that a couple of times. And now I'm using the um, gloss black, this gloss black paint here, full gloss, wet look. It looks there, so it's coming along quite nicely. Um, I also, um, what I decided to do to make the motorboard. I'm using MDF board, which is this, which I found um, in the workshop here, just a piece cut off. And as I mentioned last time, I'm using the, um, I'm using a template. So, so far what I've done is I've actually cut out the gramophone segment here. This is where the horn will go. And if you can imagine, this will go when it's fixed under there. I uh, can't really do it one hand. There we go. There we go. And uh, this will slot in. 
and then I fitted the motor. Now the motor was the one I talked to you about last time, but I haven't actually finished refurbishing. I've decided to use the 12 inch disc because I think it fits better. And I've, um, so, and also I found a brake. So um, if I just, actually what I'll do, if I just put this down, I can show you better actually what all the cutouts are. Uh, because, interesting, interestingly enough, um, it's not st straightforward. I've learned quite a lot from this. You have to make sure that the holes, of course, are in the right place. But also, this motor, where normally the um, winding mechanism would come out straight, as it were, this one didn't. So I've had to slightly rotate it to, to the left. So these screws look slightly odd in, with our positioning, because normally speaking, they would, these, these two here would be down here. So to make sure that the, the, the screw turn... Uh, which, if I show you under sight, here we go, comes out straight. Otherwise, it would be at a funny angle. Obviously, the gramophone this came from originally, I don't know, it was just a spare parts box, this, this motor, um, was slightly offset. And so I've had to sort of reset it, basically, put it into a straight line. Um, and then that's going to be fitted into the, into the casing that um, I mentioned last time, which I'll show you in a second. So the spacing is quite important. This actual spacing here, it, because this particular casing, which is here, is slightly longer than the one it came from originally. If I just take that out and put that back on this, I'm going to do this one-handed, it's more difficult. Right, so these are the parts that I took out. I found some nice screws. I found some wood in here, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. And this was the template, cardboard template I used originally. Uh, this is the gramophone it came from, which is, of course, uh, long gone now because I got rid of everything. Um, and this is the template. So, because obviously this, I use this as the template, it was slightly longer. You can imagine this is slightly longer at one end. So I just measured it and extended it. And um, so on there, there's the motor board and the bits on the back. So it's you have to use a little bit of a, an art of science, really, with some of this, just to make sure your measurements are right. Now the next stage I've got is to obviously put the support mechanisms in. So these are going to be the supports. Now these are pieces of timber, and all I've done is I'll just bring this over here for you to see. I've drilled some holes. And they're going to run alongside the edges here. Now this one I've made specifically for this side. You can just about see that. And what you've got to watch out for, of course, is you've got the horn section here, which is going to encroach in some of that. So I've had to make, where is it, this one shorter. Because that's going to go here because the horn encroaches onto, you can see that, so I can't have too much, I can't have too much coming this way because it will get in the way actually, because it fits under there. So I've made that shorter, that one. This one's longer, but of course you've got to work, watch out for when the tone arm and the other part of the horn fits. And then I've made a smaller piece here, which will just go at the back, so that will fit here under here somewhere okay so it's the sort of positioning of these things I've learned is quite important actually um, in terms of where things are going to go obviously this will be stained um, a dark mahogany color so it will match the actual case itself and I've taken all the bits off all the hinges off as you can see here and let me just put that on there because what I'm going to do is find some round-headed screws to go on there. And um, also, I'm going to make the lid open the other way, because otherwise it's on the wrong side. Because the other thing I've noticed is that gramophones always operate either from the end turning the screw, or always on the right-hand side. They're always right-hand biased. And, um, and we take these things for granted quite often, so I've learned another lesson from that. So I'm going to have the decided so I'm going to have the handle come out here 
and then it's going to have to open the other way which means I'm going to be reposition this, this, the hinges onto the end so it opens clam, clam like like gramophone, case gramophones do and then I'll obviously be putting some, a few other embellishes along the way so it's coming along so um, and uh, hopefully by the time of the next video our things will be a bit further on but anyway just thought I'd update you where we are and uh, look forward to your comments and uh, see you all very soon